Hi, I'm Prashant, co-founder of Reco. Reco is a no-code data warehouse uh, built for finance teams uh, to automate uh, their uh, complex tasks such as reconciliation. Uh, I'll be taking you through uh, the problem uh, finance team face, the solution Reco has created, and the architecture for it in this PPT. Uh, so the problem finance team face is they have to kind of deal with a lot of different data sources, uh, different formats as the uh, businesses evolve and grow. Uh, and the, the software systems that the uh, finance teams use uh, are very rigid. So they always have to transform data uh, the way is uh, legacy systems want it to be, right? And then they also uh, don't accept uh, like huge volume of data. So you have to do a lot of aggregation, right? So, and uh, the problem gets uh, even multiplied when the data changes right, over time and new sources get added. So, uh, but then finance teams don't really have a, a way to kind of uh, automate this, right? They don't really know uh, coding or databases, right? So they have to kind of, uh, uh, start doing it manually on Excel sheets. Right? With Excel sheet, the problem doesn't get really solved uh, because it's it's a very slow process uh, to run uh, on Excel sheet. Uh, Excel sheet doesn't have access to a lot of resources because it runs on laptop. And when the data gets downloaded on multiple system, data fragmentation issues starts coming up. Right? So all this kind of results into uh, finance team uh, not having data with proper audit trails and the data not being queryable, right? And uh, this uh, results into, again, not having visibility into the finances. So uh, businesses have to do write-offs. Uh, they miss deadlines in terms of uh, like internal reporting or reporting to the board. Uh, and they might even kind of uh, have to delay the audits, right? Which can affect their funding or some compliances, right? So uh, the solution uh, Reco has created, right? It, it, so it lets uh, businesses sync their data at a real-time basis. Uh, so there, through easy integrations, uh, versioning is possible. So you can choose which version to pick, right? For a particular uh, analysis. Uh, this kind of removes uh, the, the stale data issue. And uh, so we also support AI-based validation to cleanse the data, right? Uh, once the data is cleaned, uh, so you have all this data uh, sitting on record. So, so it's kind of a single source of truth, right? Now you can automate all the data processing here uh, without using any code. So you, you can do custom analysis, you can do reconciliation, and you can kind of completely automate it as and when the new data comes, it happens. Uh, uh, and then all of these processing happens at scale. So task won't take like hours, like it will mostly be completed in minutes. Uh, and all of these uh, changes uh, are followed by the audit trail. So you're always uh, are ready for any kind of audit. Uh, and uh, once this, uh, the workflows have been created, uh, you can use this for reporting without having to code. Uh, then uh, you can identify leakages, risk. Uh, you can create insightful dashboards uh, so that you can optimize your expenses uh, or working capital. So, uh, so that's how uh, the problem is solved for finance teams. Uh, so let's look at the, uh, some of the architectural choices we made to kind of create this platform. So double entry accounting, you must have heard about this term. It, uh, it's basically, if you look at it from uh, a, an engineering perspective, it's kind of a graph uh, where the nodes are the accounts and the edges are the transactions. Uh, at any point in time, if the sum of all nodes is not zero, then it's the data is not consistent. So uh, it kind of helps uh, there. Uh, the second part, which is flexibility. So uh, different businesses uh, have generated different kinds of data and the platform should be kind of flexible enough, enough to accommodate that data. And uh, uh, it should let finance team to kind of uh, specify the rules, how you want to convert that business data into accounting data, right? Uh, security is also, uh, is kind of very important because uh, uh, it's uh, the, the data that we're dealing with is is sensitive, and uh, we kind of try to use a uh, lot of established patterns such as zero trust networking, uh, uh, SSOs, uh, role based access control uh, to kind of uh, establish that like by design. Uh, so yeah, the security is kind of uh, baked in into the architecture. 
the uh, fourth point which is auditability uh, is kind of uh, we kind of learned about it while working with finance teams so uh, where no data is changed so data is immutable if you want to update anything you can create new entries to do that so which kind of uh, is really important when it, when you want to make systems auditable right uh, now this kind of uh, increases the amount of data that need to be stored uh, so the in scalability we certainly have a unique challenge and also the kind of market we are addressing right so uh, finance team across the world uh, need this uh, solution to kind of automate their work so uh, we kind of uh, solved it in a very interesting way so uh, looking at the uh, architecture from the infrastructure side so we have microservices uh, then which use sql database uh, as operational data stores any changes happening there are synced uh, via a nifi pipeline with uh, that then goes to uh, the data lake uh, the external data comes uh, goes via a different pipeline uh, which uses kafka spark uh, inside emr and dynamodb which uh, these things are like kind of built for scale and very skewed load. Uh, then uh, S3, we use it at Data Lake. All of the data is kind of present here uh, for any kind of analysis. Uh, we do all kind of analysis in the data warehouse where we create use case specific data marts. And this data then can be consumed uh, directly from data warehouse or via the analytics pipeline. Uh, so for scalability, we have kind of used different strategies uh, in different components. So microservices use ECS, while uh, the CDC pipeline uses EKS to kind of auto scale, uh, while uh, Kaf the external data pipeline is kind of built for very skewed load because some people might push data uh, at different frequencies, right, or in different sizes of data. So it's kind of really built for that uh, as if we, we are using uh, technologies which are kind of managed by AWS and, and they kind of inherently support that kind of scale. Uh, Data Lake runs on S3, which is like a, one of the uh, very good option for storing huge amount of data. You can do tiering there. Uh, and then uh, you can uh, also be cost effective at the same time. Uh, then we are using Redshift because it kind of supports a, lot, a massive parallel processing. And when we have data stored in normalized format, it uh, like parallel processing really helps. Uh, and the analytics pipeline, which basically is built for scaling the read, is kind of done via Aurora DB, which is uh, kind of an auto scalable database. Auditability and traceability uh, is uh, uh, achieved by using Data Vault principles, uh, where we uh, store all of the original data in normalized format. So there is no data loss happening anywhere, which is, which is a typical case in standard data warehouses. Uh, so uh, while uh, Storing data in original formats may not be uh, simple for user to consume that. So for that, we create data marts, which basically cleans uh, the uh, uh, the original raw data and then prepares it for analysis. So uh, so this is how we kind of achieve uh, good of both worlds, being able to store the original data as well as being able to present data uh, in the way uh, user wants to look at. Uh, so, so yeah, this is how uh, we kind of uh, have created Reco, which is uh, a no-code data warehouse, right? And it's act as a single source of truth for finance teams. Thank you.